Hi YouTube, it's Jason from Envious Customs here. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the latest version of Body Diagnostics. Currently the latest version is 0 0.0.0.6. Uh, if you have a newer version, it should be quite similar, you just may have a few added options in there. So, uh, what is Body Diagnostics? Uh, body Diagnostics allows you to perform professional uh, diagnostics on the main control modules in your car. This includes the instrument cluster, the SRS module, the body control module, or also known as BCM, as well as the radio. Other modules will be added in future updates. In, uh, this can include uh, such modules as the ABS module, which will only be on supported models. Uh, and so today I'm going to be connecting up to a few bits and pieces here. So I'm on a bench setup. So this isn't in car, this is on a bench. On the bench I have a VY HSV cluster, I have a VY SRS module, a VY BCM, and I also have a VX instrument cluster uh, set up. So I'm just going to connect up to the VY instrument cluster first and demonstrate these main features going on. So let's go ahead and press connect. There you go. You can see as we connected up to a bunch of modules here. So we got the instrument cluster, successfully detected it, the SRS module, the BCM, uh, but the radio uh, didn't, uh, didn't detect because it's not connected. It's also by default not selected here because a lot of vehicles don't have the factory radio connected. So next going on to the main menu, under the instrument cluster tab, we then have these four main categories to look under. So this is the details tab, allows us to view the part number, production date, fuel calibration number, country and a bunch of other information. Uh, next we have live data. Shows us a bunch of live data, the pointer angles, fuel resistance, uh, trip switch. You can detect whether there is a stuck switch as well using this if it's always constantly held down. Uh, we also have the warnings indications. This is information about various warnings and in inputs uh, to the cluster. We also have faults, so we can read out some current faults. So I don't have an ABS connected uh, currently, don't have the, the P, uh, PCM or ECU connected. Also don't have the radio connected. So that's what those three main current issues are reading history, a bunch of history faults that the clusters had over time. I can then go ahead and clear the faults, although they just, they'll clear the history faults, but the current faults, because they're a current issue, they'll come back instantaneously because they, they need to be repaired. Uh, next, going on to the programming menu. So we have four sub menus here, configuration, fuel, service, and customization. So I'm going to read out engine and trans. So it's a, currently set up for being a V8 an automatic and the pulse per kilometer is 6250 so that's PPK so you need to adjust this to make your speedometer more accurate so that the what you read on the dials matches say what you've got on a GPS so you need to increase and decrease I uh, recommend increasing and decreasing this by a factor of a hundred so I would increase it by a hundred or decrease it by a hundred uh, to determine whether I need to increase or decrease my uh, reading on the dash uh, so I also got the SRS configuration here and also have a few added options which include occupant climate control, tire pressure monitoring which is only available in VZ, it's not VY, digital speedo, also known as police mode. So in a VY, if you turn this on, uh, this will make a large digital speedo like the VZs have and also seatbelt warning and you can turn that on and off. Uh, one I'm going to demonstrate is on the SRS configuration. This one's the main one to actually get correct because if you don't have the SRS configuration correct in the instrument cluster, you'll have a SRS warning pop up and it won't go away and can't be cleared until the instrument cluster configuration is correct. Your configuration can, can only be one of these. It can't be something different. So it's either you have no SRS system, you have pretensioners, pre plus driver, pretensioners plus driver plus passenger, or pretensioners plus driver plus passenger plus side airbags. So it has to be these, it can't be something different. So you have to go ahead and make sure you've got the right thing. So whether it's just uh, pretension of us driver, so I'm changing it to a three loop. So I can go ahead and click right. There we go, programming successful. And so you'll need to turn your ignition off and then back on and let the instrument cluster reset uh, successfully. Uh, and then it will keep it like that. So just for demonstration, I'm just going to set this to zero and I'm going to read it again just to show you that the configuration has updated. So click read. There we go, it's gone to a three loop. And you can do the same for the engine and trans information, so change it to a V6 if you needed, uh, manual, automatic, and also the speed, speed OPPK, so you change that to make it more accurate. Going into the fuel menu, so now I can read out the fuel settings. So there's a lot of information going on here. For most people, if you've got a cluster, you just need to select from this menu. 
uh, make sure if it's a series one, only click a series one configuration, or if it's series two, only series two configuration. You can try and do a series swap. So uh, for VY, you have series one and series two. If you've got the wrong series in your car, your fuel gauge will work upside down. Uh, you can try and repair that by selecting a, a series two or series one configuration, so the opposite you got, but the customer may not accept the change. Uh, so that's just a, a, a firmware thing inside the clusters. Some work, some don't. If it doesn't work, the, neat, uh, the fuel gauge will be stuck in one position or it might bounce around and go nuts. The way to fix that is just to set it back to its original series, so whether it's series one or two. Uh, so for this, it's currently set to a sedan. I'm just going to go ahead and click utility, change it to a ute. So now I've got all this, it's changed it and updated it, so it's only a 68 litre tank. Uh, it's got the new fuel, fuel calibration number. You've got a bunch here as well. I'm just going to go ahead and click right. There we go. Successfully programmed. If I give it a moment just to let it update to the cluster. So I'm just going to change it back to sedan just to show you that it will update again when I read it. So click read. There we go. It's changed to utility. I can then go to the service menu. Uh, I can change the intervals, the next service, uh, whether the due, lot, the due uh, warning pops up. And then also now I've got the customization. So currently it's set to HSV. Uh, it's set to being a custom shutdown logo. Uh, the custom text is custom HSV and the build number is 639. I can also uh, set it to being the standard Holden logo or the Chevy logo. So to have a custom shutdown message, you have to have it set to HSV. You can then select from one of these predefined messages or you can select a custom uh, shutdown message. So if I click custom I can then change this text to whatever I want as long as it's 10 digits long which is exactly this and then also a four digit build number which you have to have so you can have it set to 0001 or 2002 or whatever you want it set to uh, so just to demonstrate I'm just going to put it to Holden and I'm just going to click on right there we go it's successfully programmed so if I change that back to Chev and then click read we should see it go back to Holden yep because it's programmed in as a Holden now so that's uh, it's easy to do. There we go. That worked. All right. So now moving on to the SRS module. So that's the main instrument cluster programming. I'll go back to it soon for the VT one. So SRS. We can read some information about the module. We have a bunch of live data, and so it tells us what the SRS module setup is. So it's for six loops. So all the airbags are meant to be fitted to the vehicle. Battery voltage. Whether the module has been deployed and a bunch of capacitance and resistance values which you can use to uh, identify a problematic system. So currently because I'm uh, on a bench setup, everything's set to a max ohms value and also capacitance value. So uh, just look, uh, the best way to diagnose airbag issues is look for the ones that are way off and don't match anything else uh, in the car. Uh, now going to the faults. There we go, I have a bunch of faults in the system because I haven't got uh, anything connected up. So these are current issues which have to be repaired before uh, the SRS light can be cleared. Got history faults, got a bunch of history faults going on. And we have a special one down at the bottom called configuration mismatch to instrument. This occurs when the instrument cluster's configuration doesn't match the airbag module's configuration. So that means you have to change the instrument cluster configuration to match the airbag. So this in this circumstance, I'd need to change the uh, the cluster to a sixth loop to match the rest of the car. So I could go ahead and clear them and get rid of the history faults quickly, but then the current faults will come back immediately uh, because they're current issues in the car. Uh, moving on to the body control module, some live data, some live details, and some information about it. We've got the live data now. I can read information, ignition switch, a bunch of other switches, illumination relay statuses. Uh, lots of stuff to go through and check out to see if something's not uh, working correctly, or even checking if the remote, uh, the remote key or your uh, your keys, if they're working, which number is currently in the ignition barrel. Uh, then we also got faults. So currently it says it hasn't got the OK message from the PCM because it's not connected. Uh, it can't detect the slip ring because it's not connected. Uh, ECU is not detecting any data from it and also it's not detecting any data from the ABS. So those are the current issues with the BCM. Also got history information, which is pretty much the same. It's missing a whole bunch of uh, stuff. We can also clear the faults away as well. And then finally we have the radio. I don't have one connected up uh, at this moment, but you can see 
a bunch of information about the radio and also you can read out the fault codes and that's about it you can do for the radio at this point in time. So now let's go back let's go back to the main menu. So I click here, go back to the main menu. Now I'm just going to disconnect now and I'm going to connect up to be a VT series 2. There you go, because I got a VT cluster, press connect. There we go. So it's detected all the other modules. It's also detected the VT cluster. Let's go to main. So now I'm going to try reading out some information for the VT cluster. So I, don't, I just need to swap over the clusters. Two seconds. All right. So we have the VT cluster is connected. So if I click read, there we go. Got some information from the VT cluster, part number, software date. Uh, I can now read out some live data as well. And also the warnings and indications. So similar to what you can do in the VY. Uh, also faults, so I can read out faults. So no ABS, ECC or PCM. A uh, bunch of information and history faults are currently going on. Uh, programming, so there's a few different options to what we had before. So I read these out. There we go. So it's set up for being an LS1 V8 Gen 3. Uh, uh, currently, the high voltage TACO is enabled. The transmission uh, is auto. Got the speedo PPK. Digital speedo is enabled. It's got the six loop six loop SRS setup. Uh, ECC is present, and a bunch of other lamps and stuff you can change. Uh, so it's easy enough to change. So say if I want to set it now to a V6, click right. Takes a little bit longer because it's got a few more things to do. Has to reset the cluster, updating cluster. There we go. And then you may hear it as it goes off and beeps at me because I'm on the bench setup. It's just because it's reset the cluster and it's uh, redoing its all its checks again. So now I need to go to. I can go to the fuel settings and I can change uh, the fuel calibration here as well. So just let it read out some data. There we go. So currently, so this is a message I wanted to show as well. If uh, there's an unknown fuel calibration detected, it's just going to let you know. Uh, the reason why it might be unknown is because this application, Body Diagnostics, only stores the newest fuel calibrations uh, currently available. It may not have some of the older stuff. So any of the fuel calibrations you can check from here are the latest ones you can possibly get. So they're, they're the newer revised versions. So I could easily select the sedan, and you can see it updates a little bit. Uh, or I can do the supercharged utility and you can see it all changes just slightly you can go ahead and write and change it when you need to. Uh, so that, that pretty much describes the, the main features of body diagnostics. I will be adding more modules as previously stated as time goes on and uh, more features, replaying data and uh, other abilities uh, later on. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions feel free to message me or post below and I'll get back to you uh, as soon as I can. Thanks guys.